I'm doing something a little different for this video. This is going to be a video showing a new piece of artwork, fan-based artwork, and I'm also going to do a little bit of a review of a TV show that I've recently gotten into. Uh, this is a show that I started watching on Netflix called The Orville. Some of you may know what this is, uh, some of you may have never heard of it. It's a show created by Seth, Seth MacFarlane. Yes, that one. And it's a science fiction comedy drama. Uh, it pulls a lot of inspiration from Star Trek, The Twilight Zone, and for a show that is a comedy, especially one written by Seth MacFarlane, I went in kind of expecting more family guy-esque jokes, jokes uh, things that just were more lowbrow, easy jokes, uh, low-hanging fruit, that kind of stuff. And whenever I actually got into the show and I gave it, uh, I think I got really into it during the second episode. So it got, I got into it real quickly. It's one of those shows where I honestly did not expect it to be so intriguing. And I want y'all to keep in mind, I am not a Star Trek fan. And it pulls a lot of inspiration from it. But you don't have to be a fan in order to understand what you're getting into. It's a science fiction show that has a lot of humor in it. So if you've watched anything from Doctor Who, or if you at least know of it, uh, maybe you've seen some Twi uh, Twilight Zone episodes, then you're gonna catch on real quick. And the clever thing about this show is the uh, universe building, I can't say world building because there's more than just one world they go to, but the universe building is very intriguing. It's very modern in an odd way. They deal with a lot of issues that people are currently talking about. And it does in a way where there's n not really, and I'm gonna try and avoid spoilers as much as I can. There's not truly a bad guy. Uh, some of you who have probably watched the more recent season are probably going to scream at me in the comments, but I'm gonna wait to see how some of the more recent episodes and uh, some of the stuff that's happened within uh, the last season, I I'm gonna wait to see how this plays out, because from some of the other quote-unquote villains that have been shown, there's always a very reasonable side as to why they're acting the way they act. So I'm kind of holding out to see how this progresses. But for this video, uh, I want to kind of delve into a to one of the episodes that just... I was honestly surprised at how much it got to me. The episode I'm referring to is called Lasting Impressions. It comes from Season 2, Episode 11. And it involves uh, the actor Scott Grimes, who plays Lieutenant Gordon. And he falls in love. I don't want to say too much more than that, because I don't want to spoil any of the moments. Because the way they wrote how his love interest comes about, and the whole process that he goes through. I really want you to just enjoy it whenever you get to it. I, I really do think that's the best way to enjoy most things. Uh, usually whenever I watch trailers for movies, they show too much, and I know what I'm getting into whenever I go watch it, and it ruins the experience. But with the Orville, I went in and I... I didn't read the synopsis, aside from it's a science fiction comedy show, and I didn't know what was coming. So I went in blind, and I feel like that's the best way because you don't go in already knowing what's going to happen. So I'm going to try and avoid spoilers. But uh, Scott Grimes, playing Lieutenant Gordon, he falls in love, and I'm not that into romance stories. I find them tedious, boring, and uh, I, 
I just, they're frustrating to me, to put it bluntly, they're frustrating to me. But this episode was surprising, especially towards the end. There's a moment where he, uh, Lieutenant Gordon sings with his love interest. And the song that they sing together, it's a reference from The Last Unicorn. Which is why in this painting I'm doing an image where it's of the two actors in their respective roles. And the entire scenery as well as their outfits, it's all based around The Last Unicorn. So once you're done watching this episode, go off and replay the original music from The Last Unicorn. Uh, the song that they are referencing, it's... that's all I've got to say. The song where the prince is singing to the unicorn, Amalthea. And really do consider the whole story behind The Last Unicorn, it kind of brings a new depth to the way the episode in the Orville plays out. And, ooh, once that song started playing and I realized what it was, I actually started tearing up. It, it got to me. It got me real hard. Right in the hearts. <laughs> Nostalgic hearts. Uh, <laughs> so, I would say... Go in blind, enjoy the ride, and be surprised by how well written this entire show is. Uh, I do believe that they're showing more, like they're doing another season. I cannot wait for that. Seth MacFarlane did such a good job, and he's actually a way better actor than I ever thought he would be. Granted, I can't say much on that, because I've never seen him play... Or act out, or like, himself act. And not be just a voice actor. But he's actually pretty good at what he does. Uh, the entire cast and crew are also really great. Um, I would say my favorite two characters would have to be Isaac, the robot. Like, he, he just, just hilarious to me, but, oh, hands down, the greatest character is Bordis. I had no idea somebody who gave such a performance where he doesn't really emote too much, but it's the deliveries, his comedic timing. Every single time he's on screen, I just bust up laughing. It, he's an amazing talent. Uh, the actor is Peter Macon, Macon. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the names, but he plays Bordis, and Bordis is the greatest character of all time. And for anyone out there who disagrees, well, I'll let Bordis respond to you. You will be silent! The special effects, you can kind of tell that he utilized all the money that he got from Family Guy, American Dad, all of those other shows, he's been using his money to the betterment of this new show, because the Orville, the special effects, the designs, the costumes, oh, and the practical effects with the aliens, especially for the people who are in full-blown suits like Bordis, oh, it's so good. They do an amazing job with that, and I appreciate Seth MacFarlane for going through the effort to actually have actual masks and uh, practical effects whenever he has actors who are supposed to be aliens. And uh, you can see with all the space battles and other interactions whenever they're flying through space or they're chasing someone through space, it, it actually looks really good. So whether or not you're a fan of Family Guy, just know that the Orville, although it's a comedy, and it does have some kind of, I would say, more college humor in it here and there, there's a lot of heart and passion put behind it. You can definitely tell that Seth MacFarlane wanted this to be his grand opus whenever it comes to creating a TV series. 
so I would highly recommend it. Even if you're not a fan of Star Trek, I would recommend it just for the whole immersion of space. Uh, if you're sick and tired of the whole superhero aspect, ah, go to more of a Star Trek theme. And seriously, Bordas, best character. So down in the comments, y'all let me know if you like this new video where I do a painting with a review. Uh, it was actually a lot easier to do, mostly because I'm trying to avoid spoilers. And if I do continue and make more videos like this, where it's fan art plus a review, I'm gonna make sure that I go about it without ruining the show or the movie or whatever it is I'm reviewing. And I don't know, I think I might try doing the Dark Crystal next. Cause I've been really I've been really loving the new series. It's it's quite amazing. So that might be the next video. Y'all let me know what you think about this, uh, if there's anything I can change. And uh I hope y'all liked it.